Hello there. Good morning to you. This is Kakaki Social. I'm Rena Obozegi. Now, the management of the National Examinations Council, NECO, is being dragged on the space of social media over its plan to have every one of their workers gather in MENA, the Niger State capital, for promotion exam in February. As contained in the circular, everyone is responsible for their bills. So their transportation, their feeding, their accommodations is nobody's business. And as you would see in the circular, it says it's a notice of date for 2024 staff promotion exam. It will be holding on the 13th of February and uh, no, 14th of February, but then arrival is 13th of February. And it says staff would be expected to bear the cost of their transportation and accommodation. Those for oral interview are to present original copies of their credentials. And it says the registrar will wishes all staff good luck in their examination so every one of them is supposed to be here on that day for the examination from the 36 states and then the fct of course now let's see how it's been going down on twitter or x if you prefer this user says with the space of insecurity in this country NECO asks their staff from the 36 states and the fct to go to mina for the staff promotion exam they will also bear the cost of their accommodation and transportation on top of how much salary Bikonu. Why can't they do it online in their various states? What if they get kidnapped? Why do we like stressing each other? And then for another user, while Joe says, this seems deliberate. What is the goal if not to cause distress for a lot of people? Better to remain unpromoted than lose your life. And more thought is from Lawrence. We'll take it from the second paragraph where he says, the staff are fully responsible for every cost from transportation, accommodation, feeding, and of course, ransom. I'm beginning to think that these organizations are deliberately bringing potential customers to the net of these terrorists. And finally, um, this user says, why can't it happen online or they should divide the 36 states into zones at least? I mean, these were recommendations. I deliberately left out, uh, you know, fights to bring recommendations to them. Maybe they want to consider this because having a lot of people in the same space right now with a public knowledge, I mean, it it's, may not be the best. But let's uh, move away to other matters. Operatives of the Abbey State Police Command have invaded a media house, ABN TV and radio station in Umwaya and arrested a studio guest on their live show. The director of the station, Ifanyo Okali, narrated that the police claimed they came to arrest the guest, Uden C. Donald, after a family matter petition written against him by his elder brother, Uche Uden C. He says he's worried that the invasion that led to destruction of expensive equipment is an attack on press freedom as the police could have waited and arrested the guest after his exit from the station. They just came to the radio. I'm having a live program. They just came to the radio station that want to arrest me. They are attacking me. What did I do? Who petitioned me? I'm not owing anybody. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't do anything to anybody. How will the police enter to the radio station and they want to arrest me? I'm calling on the Nigerian police. How will the police enter a radio station and they want to arrest me? The criminal. What did I do? Who did I, who did I say anything for? Who did I? Tell me the police station we are going to. The Tell me the police station. The major point is you come out. Come out. Come out. Without the calling. You cannot arrest me. 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 All right, so that was the case in Abia for Edu. She says, unprofessionalism at its peak. What can't they just, or why can't they just hang by and jump on him once he's done with the interview? And then another user, Prince, says, ask them to go look for kidnapped victims. You will never see them. Once they are sent to go and arrest citizens from homes and radio stations, there you will see how they claim to love Nigeria. But then from um, the spokesperson in the state who is identified as ASP Morin, she says, we are currently investigating the situation in the video. Be rest assured that this situation will be properly handled and the right action will be taken. We urge the public to remain calm. Hopefully, 
we see the result of this investigation. Now, Anambra State Governor Charles Soludo is also not spared on the space of social media over the destruction of goods owned by street traders in Okadi State Capital. Now, a netizen who shared a video of destruction said, unlike other times when they used to confiscate people's goods, this time, confiscated goods were immediately set ablaze. Okay, from this user, he says that, um, is this what Governor Soludo is doing to Anambra people, targeting the poor and destroying their small businesses? This is wickedness. But then another user who was responding to this post on the space of social media under the comment section feels otherwise, and he says that Nigerians always prefer the hard way. A typical Nigerian must have received a warning. I wish the Delta State government could do the same to all those markets in illegal places. But reacting to that one too is Oluwa Bukolami. He says, so the situation to them not moving their wares is to destroy, or the solution to them not moving their wares is to destroy the wares, visit them armed with taxes and machetes. What happens to to arresting them to face the law if they have broken the law and give them the right to a fair hearing. Also, um, wake up, someone who is tweeting at um, wake up, he says, insecurity pro max loading. These people don't learn. The leaders who make these decisions have looted the public wealth to secure bulletproof vehicles and vast amount of wealth to secure foreign passport for them and their families. So technically, this user is concerned that everyone who is losing their businesses right now, might just want to go on the other side and be against the state. But then finally, Peter V says it's time for everyone in government in Nigeria to take a break from foreign trips as part of sincere effort to fight insecurity heads on. He says he's afraid that no foreign investor would consider the country for business as it is right now. And then on a post on X, Obi recounts how the now president and his vice promised to switch their roles to, of security and economy in the interest of Nigerians based on their expertise that has so far not yielded positive results according to him. Let's see some pages of his um, release, if we have to put it that way. It says President Muhammad Buhari in 2015 campaigned and won the elections on three items, security, economy, and corruption. Sec. After his eight years in office, the situation has worsened in all three areas. The present administration on assuming office promised to deal decisively with the same situation, security, economy, and corruption. Today, however, the situation is getting even worse than It says at the annual general conference of the Nigerian Bar Association held in Lagos in August 2022, the then vice presidential candidate, Senator Kashim Shetima, categorically stated that if APC is elected, he as vice president will be in charge of security, while the president as an expert in economy will handle the economy. Nigerians therefore now implore them to fulfill their campaign promises, even if they do not achieve 100% result, we want to see 100% effort. And then he finally suggested that all trips should at this point be suspended he says it's now time to stop all forms of foreign trips from people in government until we deal with the ugly situation facing our Facing us at home, no foreign investor or partner would like to invest in Nigeria with the situation we now found ourselves in. So that will be uh, the space of social media. Now let's have some thoughts under his post. Chukwe Buka says there should be a law with 10 years jail term for any government that renegades on its campaign promises, especially when it 
concerns security of lives and the economy. That's the only way to make these so-called leaders pay for their crimes against the country. And also, the purveyor of truth says, I hope Nigerian government can declare war on domestic terrorists, bandits, Boko Haram, and expose all their financiers. I hope Nigerian government can value the lives of their citizens and provide more security and keep Nigerians safer. Also, um, Frank says they keep on squandering our money on fruitless foreign trips when the ones on ground are living. If government can fold its hands and watch businesses of native investors being destroyed in the name of non-compliance with set rules, but they have been collecting taxes from them. But then against Peter Obi is Kumaya or advising him who says, yeah, Peter Obi, we would appreciate if you stick to engaging this government constructively and stop this gaslighting. And he says, thank you. All right, I would copy his words right now to tell you thank you too for being a part of Kakaki Social this morning. I will see you again tomorrow. Kindly hold on for us. The show continues with Kunle and Adora after now. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,